Hi, this is Brian Aldrich from 4th Street Software. Today I'm going to start making a series of little videos about the board game. And uh, this is 4th Street Baseball. And in front of you, I've rather than set this all out in the form of the board game itself, so using the paper parts and a tabletop, I've set uh, kind of a duplicate system up on a computer so that it's a little bit easier to see. Now some of that's going to look kind of silly. For example, these are my dice up here. Um, the reason I did that is they're still random. So they literally do roll. At least some of them do. These two are the two D10 that come with the game. One is always colored, usually green. The other one is white. This is a D20, so it's a 20-sided die. And then it always comes with two, a pair of uh, six-sided dice that are just normal old Joes. Okay, well, we're going to start out by taking a look at the uh, different player cards. By the way, this is the uh, kind of an outline of the field. It's not painted the way that it comes with the game. It would be green rather than white, but uh, you can see that. And I've got a few markers here too, some defensive ones, which are blue. These red ones are used to mark base runners. And there's a set of three black ones that all can be used to uh, keep track of ball strikes and outs, if need be. We're just going to take a look at the basic game today. And uh, like I said, I'm going to start out by just showing you around the cards themselves so you can kind of familiarize yourself with them. All right. All just like it always is in baseball, you are going to start with looking at a pitcher. And so, here's a pitcher. This is Jerry Casal, or Casali. I'm not sure how to say some of the names of these guys. These are from 1960, so they were born around and playing before I was born, actually. But what I've got here is a pitcher card. And there's different sections on this card. Now, if you, you just look at it, it can kind of be overwhelming. So let's walk through it here a little bit to help you make sense of what's going on. There's a count section over here on the left. And we'll just go from left to right and just walk through the whole thing here. Now, in the basic game, you don't really use that a whole lot. You can if you want to, but it's not a necessity. That's the nice thing about this. It's uh, This game is kind of modulized, so you can use some of the rules, some of the advanced rules with some of the basic ones, and vice versa. But uh, what I, I'm going to show you here is how this thing works. So these are the different counts that are possible. It's always ball, strike. So zero, zero count, zero, one. So zero balls, one strike, etc. And there's a number off to the right of that. And if you look really close, you can tell that it starts down here about 4 and goes up to 99. Well, that that corresponds to a 10-sided dice roll, two 10-sided dice roll, which are combined to make numbers anywhere from 0 to 99, or 0, 0 to 99. So... Starting here at the top, what we have is you'll get a zero zero count on rolls zero zero through zero four. An O and one count will transpire when you have zero five, so just after the four here, up to nine, so zero nine. An O two count occurs on rolls of ten through fourteen. A one and O count occurs on fifteen to twenty three, etc. So way down here at the bottom, a full count occurs on rolls 72 to 79. And then actually the batter has a chance to um, affect the ball strike count too. Some, some batters are much better at waiting out counts than others. Joe Maurer comes to mind, uh, being a native Minnesotan here. So there's a batter instance here too on rolls 80 to 99. All right, so if we take a look at Bobby Richardson, okay, he's a hitter, 
and there's a count section on his card as well. And as you can see, it, it continues on from where it left off on Kasali. So what we've got is a zero, zero count from rules 80 to 82, 01 on 83 to 85, etc. A full count would occur on roll 99 alone. So by looking at this, I can kind of tell that Richardson liked to swing early in the count. He doesn't have nearly as many deep count calls as he does early count ones. Okay, so back to Gasal. In the next section, we have a matchup, and that's the key on the whole game of 4th Street Baseball. It's done similarly to what the count is. That is, there is a 0 to 99 range, and you'll notice that there's a sequence of uh, symbols off to here. Some of these you might recognize, some of them you might not. The first one is a power symbol. So, Casali might be more inclined to give up a home run than some other pitchers. Um, so anyway, these numbers off to the right might be a little bit higher or lower depending upon the frequency to which uh, Casale gave up home runs. If you look down at the bottom in his stats line, he wasn't actually, didn't have a real good season here. He was 3-9 and nine with a 6-17 ERA. So he was more inclined to give up home runs than some of the other pitchers. All right, then following the power one are a sequence of fielding matchups that may occur. So the first one is with the pitcher. Now that's as the, the pitcher as a defender. So the ball has been hit to the pitcher or within his area. He should be able to feel the ball. And that will kind of either uh, show off or expose his skills, depending upon what we have. Okay, the next one is catcher. So the catcher, now not too many balls are hit to a catcher. They're usually just little dribblers out in front of the uh, home plate that he has to field. So you won't see a whole lot of those. Now, with that said, it also comes up that uh, this those two items will affect the number of wild pitches, box, uh, pass balls, etc. that occur. Okay, then we have first base, second base, third base, shortstop. So those are all infielder type things. So the ball is hit to those respective infielders. We'll see whether or not he can successfully field that or if the ball will squeak through for a single or maybe even an error. And then we have left field, center field, and right field. So these ones are a little more maybe important sometimes because if they're not caught, sometimes they'll end up being doubles or maybe even triples. Versus pitcher. Now there, there's a wide range here, so that's the biggest gap on the on the column here, and that's typical for these. So in the range 47 all the way to 92, we have against left-handed batters a versus pitcher result, which means that we're pitting the skills of the pitcher, his control, and his ability to either not walk or strike out. A potential batter or a batter against the batter's ability to draw walk or stay out of striking out. And then finally down at the bottom there's a PRK symbol park which stands for ballpark. So in this particular instance we have from range 93 all the way to 99 a ballpark effect. So that's when this ballpark is going to take place, our ballpark is going to come into play. And I've got a better picture of that later, so we'll take a look at that here too. All right, now back to my picture. Okay, so back to Gasali. We've got another column here, which is versus left-handed batters. Another one that says versus right-handed batters. These are used whenever this versus pitcher item comes up. So this is the versus pitcher section of the card. And as you can see, a lot of these results are the same. We have 44, which is a walk, 43, which is a strikeout, 41, which is a wild pitch, and then there's another 45 is a hit by pitch, 
And then there are a few other ones in here sprinkled in too. A 66 is a double play grounder to the shortstop. 53 is a slow roller to the first baseman. Uh, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different little symbols here which we can use to figure out what's that. And I'll, I'll show you the uh, result card here in just a second, or the results chart, I should say. Okay, the next section is only used if the pitcher is hitting. So we'll ignore that for now. We'll see it come up a little bit later. And then we have a bunting column. So if the pitcher is trying to sacrifice or perform a squeeze play, a hit and run column. And then the pitcher's defensive column. So this is used if he is involved in a matchup involving the pitcher's defensive ability. So way back up here. As you can see from the range, it would only occur on rolls 6 and 7. So it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, quite often you might see a wild pitch or a single or possibly an error pop up. Especially on this fella, he did not have uh, a very good season defensively either, by the looks of things. All right, now, the, this little section here, this row that goes across, are the grades that this player has, or his ratings that he has. So if you look under versus left-handed batter, his fastball rating is a 1. His breaking ball rating is a 1. One is the worst you can get in this game as far as a defensive uh, type of grade is concerned. So he's not a whole lot better against right-handed pitchers. He is a right-handed thrower, so it would make sense that he would be a little bit more effective against right-handed batters. Excuse me, yes, right-handed batters than lefties. Um, Hitting-wise, you can see there's quite a jump here. These are 11, 14, 13. Now that doesn't mean that Casali is a good hitter. What it means is that all of the offensive ratings start at 10 or 11. 11 is, is typical and go all the way up to 20. 20 is the max. And that kind of tells you how well he will perform. So he's going to strike out a lot because even if he wins a matchup, the odds of him hitting the ball are not very good. Yeah, you know, he'll draw a walk once in a while, but that's about it. Usually he's going to strike out. On the other hand, if he does make contact and he hits a hits ball to an infielder, he's at least got a chance to get on. The, these tens are all singles. We'll talk about that again a little bit later on in another video. If he manages to hit it hard enough to get it to the outfield, he might actually end up on second base of the double. This is the power column that we saw earlier before. So whenever that's in, in play, there's really not a matchup. The play automatically goes to the power section of the player. The minus five would indicate that this guy did not hit any home runs himself. And he did fly out uh, consistently here. So he didn't hit a home run at all. Uh, bunting, 10 and 10, means he's absolutely horrible at making contact and at bunting. So he probably didn't do a whole lot of that, even though he was an, an, a uh, pitcher back in the 60s. And then we talked a little bit about defense before. Now that we've taken a look at the uh, pitcher, let's go ahead and take a look at the hitting card of Richardson here just to compare and contrast a little bit. So we already spoke about his count column. Here is stats down here, and they're not overwhelming either. 252 hitter this year. He had, had 12 doubles, three triples, and a home run, which in 460 bats is not very good, even for this era. Uh, 26 rubies, which again, not very good. He stole six bases in 13 attempts, not very good. He walked 35 times in 460 at-bats, which is not a lot, but he only struck out 19 times, which means that he made contact consistently. So he's probably a pretty good hit-and-run player. We'll see that in a little bit. Okay, there's two sections here. We already talked about the count one um, on this guy's card. One is versus left-handed pitchers, and the other is versus right-handed pitchers. 
So there's a poll rating, which we're not going to use today because this is a basic game. So we'll come back to that a little bit another day. And then each of these has a, a versus pitcher, a versus infielder, a versus outfielder, and a power column. Okay, now versus pitcher, Richardson is excellent. He's got a 20, which means he made contact consistently. So no matter what the uh, pitcher spun up there, he generally was able to hit the ball. Infielder, well, he's okay. You know, he, he can bleed a single through there every once in a while and hit a liner once once in a while, but he doesn't do real great. Um, he's not a high average hitter. That's kind of where that comes from. In the outfield, okay, so if he hits a line drive to the outfield, it's not likely to end up with a hit. So 13 is uh, below average. 15 would be an average rating there. He has very little power, as we saw by his one home run. So consequently, he has very low power rating. Those power ratings range from minus 5 all the way up to positive 5. So negative 4 is about as low as you can get. Against right-handed batters, or right-handed pitchers rather, he's equally, well, pretty close to equally as good hitting the ball. He's a little bit better with his average. A little bit better with his power numbers, so doubles, triples, etc. And then uh, his power rating is just a tish better, which means that's probably where he hit his home run against. It was against a right-handed batter, a right-handed pitcher, rather. Uh, the bunting column, hit and run column, and over here is his defense. Richardson played both second and third base during the season. He's a little bit better at second. Okay, remember the defensive ratings range from 1 up to 10, usually 1 to 9 rather, and uh, 5 is average there. So he's an above average second baseman, 6 is pretty good, that's borderline gold glove, 5 would be, he's okay at third, he's not going to hurt you, but he's not going to help you either.